What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're back with some Destiny 2 news and updates. And so in this one, Bungie give us an update on future armor ornaments, as well as teasing an upcoming exotic weapon ornament for Season 22. Plus we've got clarification about recent patch changes, some of which have been updated, and then there's discussion about a possible future Destiny title, we've got more weapon changes to break down for Season 22, and we'll touch on the conversation around player numbers declining in the game. So lots to unpack today guys, as always if you enjoy the video, Video, be sure to get subscribed for more D2 news and info, but otherwise, let's get into it. And so firstly, for a couple of quick updates from Bungie, initially there's one related to Solstice Armor here, and they say based on player feedback, we're implementing transmog for both Glow and non-Glow versions of this year's and last year's Solstice Armor. This feature will go live with Season 22, so feel free to shine bright like a guardian and get your glow on if you're interested in both looks. And so there will be at least a few more options for Solstice Armor sets. Obviously, we'll only be able to do it with armors from the past two events, but it at least makes it a bit easier to use those visuals if you want to. Moving on though, Destiny got another patch yesterday, and one of the patch changes said that they moved the Guardian rank requirement for the armor charge mods from Guardian rank 6 to 7. But it turns out that was actually an error, so Bungie said, small typo, and they've changed it to removed objective to rank up the seasonal vendor from rank 6 to allow all players to access armor charge mods. And so that'll no longer require the completion of season specific stuff, which will make it easier to access for players without season passes. Another quick update right here though, and Bungie shared a new ornament coming for the Navigator exotic from the Ghosts of the Deep dungeon in Season 22. They actually did this in a recent email, so that's why the resolution of the image right there isn't huge. But if you're one of the few players that has Navigator, there will be another cosmetic option coming for it next season. Whether that will be a silver only or perhaps also available for Bright Dust item, we'll have to wait and see. Let us know down below though if you've managed to pick the navigator up, and of course I'll keep you posted with more Eververse store items once the season rolls around. Up next though, moving on to some other news, and the game post shared here, Bungie Survey teases new Destiny game on the horizon. And so essentially, Bungie sent out a survey to a series of players, not to all players, but one of the questions in the survey is how likely would you be to play a new game from the Destiny franchise? There's a further question there, thinking about a new game from Destiny, which of the following options would you prefer? And there are options like a story focused game, or something that's easy to pick up and play and put down, or something that continues the franchise storyline, has a new cast of characters, focuses heavily on PvE, and so on. And so the speculation could this confirm that there is another Destiny game in development? And of course that is a possibility, but by no means it confirms it. It's essentially just a small part of what Bungie's market research would be, gauging interest for titles like Destiny, or of course something similar. But of course it does point to the possibility that Bungie are looking at other Destiny titles. And obviously there's plenty of variety in the format that that could take, whether it's a Destiny 3 or indeed a Destiny mobile game, which we've heard rumors about already. The one thing we do know though, of course, is that Bungie plan to continue to support Destiny, according to their own words at least. And more specifically, they'd referred to supporting the franchise for decades to come. So there are plenty of possibilities there and give us your thoughts down below. But it's interesting that Bungie are posing that question to some players. Only time will tell, but I thought it was an interesting tidbit to cover anyway. So give us your thoughts about it down below. Up next though, let's discuss a little bit of conversation and a Bungie interview from a recent Massive Breakdown podcast, where they were able to speak with a couple of the testers and designers for Destiny. So some of the highlights include, as we mentioned the other day, the Bungie do intend to fix a bug where more heavy ammo can drop when running double special weapons. And the plan is to fix that in season 22. So right now, as many players know, if you're running two weapons that use special ammo, there is a very clear increase in the amount of heavy ammo drops that we get in the game. And Bungie have said this bug is actually connected to the fact that we now have infinite primary ammo. And it has been around for a little while, but importantly in season 22, it will go away. So a lot of players won't be happy to hear about that, although it does seem somewhat inevitable when it's a bug that affects gameplay in such a significant way. So share your thoughts down below. Obviously it brings up lots of conversation about the power of primary weapons in general and whether Bungie plan to do more with that. But also in the interview there was questions about the state of snipers in PvE. And obviously in terms of damage and things like that, snipers aren't the most common weapons right now. And throughout different metas that has changed. Obviously back in the day you had things like Black Spindle, which was one of the real go-to heavy weapons. And all they're really saying in connection to that is that they are probably going to take another pass at snipers in PvE beyond Season 22. So we might see them get a bit more love, or perhaps see some introduced that have a lot of damage potential, or at least the kind of damage potential that brings them in line with other popular DPS 
weapons, right? And connected to the conversation about primary weapons in PvE, there was a question about whether we'll see buffs to any legendary primary weapons. And they say initially that we should note the hand cannon buff in Season 22 is pretty substantial, and in Season 23, they're testing a 10-15% to buff to pulse rifles for PvE damage. And they say if that tests well, they'd like to actually move it to the mid-Season 22 pass, so potentially a change that we could see in September or October of this year. They go on to say they think sidearms are actually in a really good state, and they add that scout rifles won't be seen buffs anymore anytime soon. But they say that Bungie's plan is to wait and see how the hand cannon, pulse rifle and double special heavy ammo drop changes affect PvE primarily, and then they'll perhaps look at other elements like sniper rifles, auto rifles and primary weapons in general. Also in that conversation though, they teased that there is a new lightweight sidearm coming in Season 22 that's in a similar vein as the Redback sidearm, but has some quite different stuff in the perk options. They don't elaborate on it much more, but if you like that style of sidearm, it could be something to look out for as a potentially solid weapon in Season 22. On top of that though, they confirm that they are going to nerf under pressure in Season 22 by reducing the maximum accuracy bonus it can grant. And as well as that, in either Season 23 or the mid-season patch for Season 22, they plan to bring the kickstart perk down a bit as well. And these changes are primarily PvP focused, but could be a couple of other things to look out for in the near future. And in terms of other changes, they confirm that Cloud Strike is being looked at in Season 22, and they're going to reduce the radius around the player who gets headshot, so it'll go from around 5 meters closer to 3 meters. Once again, that is primarily focused as a PvP change, so whether it will affect PvE as well is something we'll have to wait and find out, but it's a relatively substantial reduction to splash damage. Certainly don't think that would be a positive thing to see in PvE, but they outline as well that there are some additional plans for bows in Season 22, in particular for lightweights and precision bows, so they're increasing the projectile velocity of precision bows so that they remain hit scan at longer distances, and matching the projectile velocity of lightweights up to it, which should make them feel more consistent and solid at slightly longer ranges. We're also looking at a couple of perks that are being affected by animations and are underperforming at certain ranges, so overall for lightweight and precision bows specifically, we can expect to see at least a couple of improvements next season. Those are really the highlights from the recent podcast breakdown, but if you want to check it out in more detail, including insights and thought processes about how they tune the game, I'll link the text breakdown and the podcast down below so you can check it out. The final thing to touch on for today though, is some conversation emerging in the community right now about player numbers and the obvious drop off that is occurring at the moment. There was an article from Paul Tassi at Forbes outlining how Lightfall may have been the sort of turning point for slightly heavier player decline in the past few months. And he points out initially that Lightfall's launch was actually the peak of Destiny concurrent players, where it had over 300,000 peak players on Steam when the expansion launched, which is even better than Witch Queen, which topped out at around 290,000. So at the point that Lightfall was released, and of course that was the point before a lot of players took issue with the story and the post-launch content, but at that point in time specifically, D2 had pretty much, as far as we can tell, more players than it had ever had. But in the time following Lightfall, as is expected, we have seen player numbers numbers decline. And if you look at the chart at the top right there, obviously things picked up a little bit in February 23, but we don't really see the full force of those numbers in February because Lightfall came out right at the end of the month. But going into March, the average daily players was around 135,000 with April seeing around 85,000, and then by May we were down to around 80,000, and it quickly dropped off going into June, where we saw 60,000 players, and then in the last 30 days, that has been just below 50,000 players. So it's definitely true that there is player drop-off, and some of that is natural, we shouldn't kind of completely forget that. Over time, as things are less new, it only makes sense that more players will stop playing, right? Bungie also have an ongoing job of bringing new players on board to Destiny because with a franchise running 10 years, naturally, there is a fatigue element there as well, which is very real. And some of that wouldn't be entirely controlled by Bungie, right? There'll always be a margin of players that just move on to something different, despite how good or bad Destiny may be at the time. But there's also another very significant part to that, right? And especially when you look at those numbers around the time that Season of the Deep came out, that disappointment that players started to feel with Lightfall wasn't significantly improved by the release of Season of the Deep. And undoubtedly, yes, that is because of some of the errors that Bungie have made, especially when it comes to things like repetitive seasonal content, the lacking quality of life updates, especially in certain areas. And I would argue a lack of uniqueness, right? That's a sort of very global term for some of the issues that Destiny is experiencing right now. And so regardless of the precise reasoning, I think most of us still hope that Bungie see those numbers and that there's a realization that more has to go into Destiny's content. There needs to be more effort put into improving quality of life and making the general experience experiences inside of the game 
more unique, engaging, and valuable in terms of player investment and time. No doubt all of those things are true, but we shouldn't forget that player decline as time goes on, as the season is less new, and as players finish what they're kind of doing in Destiny as well, as other very, very big and high quality titles release in. Once again, there's a chunk of this that is natural and expected, but there is a very real other part where players have real reasons that they are dropping off and playing less Destiny, and those are things that only Bungie can really change. So again, I just thought it would be an interesting bit of conversation to have with you guys, and I'd love to get your thoughts down below. But with the reveal coming up later this month for the final shape, seasonal content, the launch of the new season, safe to say it is a massively important time for Bungie, and there are lots of things that they do need to get right including a lot of course correction in certain areas. So share your thoughts down below. And all we can do is hope that we get some real positives later this month with the reveal and the new season. So let us know what you think in the comment section. But for today, guys, that is what we have to talk about. If you want to check out any of the articles or sources for what we've spoken about today, I will link them in the description box. But if you've enjoyed the video, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. And on top of that, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you posted with more Destiny content. But otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.